welcome to the Kilter Craft Podcast. This is episode 48 and I am Nessa, also known as Kilter Craft on Instagram and on Ravelry. And you can find my blog as www.kiltercraft.wordpress.com. And I'm also over on Ko-fi as Kilter Craft and I'll put all this information on the doobly-doo down there. Um, my Kofi is basically for donations towards shipping or prizes or just bobbing a few pounds over to um, to help me well with all those extra costs that come with the podcast and um, those are always really highly appreciated and thank you to all those who have donated. Those funds are actually always saved. I have a little um, purse that I now put them in um and keep that aside so that's not my pennies um and then when I go to shows or need a prize I can pick those up I do have um prizes to draw for the harvest hat along and uh, for the um last year's archive along I'm not going to do those yet today because I haven't prepared them sorry about that I'm doing this a little bit off the bat. Um, I've not been making a great deal. I've been working quite heavily for work. And so I've only just started picking up my knitting again um, since maybe January. It's been a long time, a really long time. Um, so I'm going to share what I am working on, which isn't a ton of stuff, and what I have finished, which also isn't a ton of stuff. <laughs> But I just wanted to do a little podcast and share and with how things have been recently it's just nice to talk to some people even though it's kind of a one-way conversation. <laughs> um, you know it just it just feels nice and I feel like I'm doing something for those who may need a little bit of company um, and, and time like a bit of friendship in a time that's really difficult. We, there is plenty of people out there that I know uh, live uh, solely and singularly um, so I know that like things like podcasts could be really like comforting and um, even though I have a partner and live with a partner I'm still finding podcasts quite comforting because um, I've not seen any of my friends for weeks and um, yeah it gets a little bit gets a little bit difficult um, also um, my friend as well um, hasn't video called me at all so I, I said to her to get like whatsapp so that I could video call her she's still not got whatsapp I might have to message her and say will you, will you get the whatsapp <laughs> um, because I, I kind of wanted to spend a little time where I could see her face and chat to her like at least it feels like it's in person even though it's not you know a bit of interaction so Today I have brewed a cup of Moomin tea. These Moomin teas were gifted to me by a friend who is one of our classic car friends who lives down south who went on a trip to Iceland? Lapland? No it was Lapland. Um, and this is the black tea rhubarb and strawberry flavour. It's one of my favourites. So I've brewed that up and I have my lovely Anthropology mushroom cup. It's absolutely one of my favourite cups. Very rarely use it because it feels too ornate. I also never want to feel like I'm going to break it. Um, I've got one of those uh, tea light candle um, light beet warmers that keep your tea kind of heated for a few hours it keeps it like air, like aired so it doesn't go cold as quick it's like a like a savior in the winter is that thing mm. so excuse me I'll have a sip oh yes <laughs> so I have finished project so let's get let's get right into it let's get in there I've finished a project 
I was working on from November last year right through until the beginning of this week. Um, I've been working on the Witching Hour, which is by um, a designer called De Ingenue, is it? I can't remember. I'll pop everything in some show notes. Um, which is this one. I think everybody's probably seen the Witching Hour Swan Show. And it's a really amazing yoke design. I really love this. Um, and I'll pop in a little a little picture because I do have um, pictures on my Instagram of me wearing this. So if you want to check those out, uh, those are available. Sorry, I'm going to keep messing with my fringe because it keeps like doing this weird party curly thing where it flits. Um, so yeah. I've been working on this for a really long time, mainly because I got to the to this part of the body and I'd done as the instructions had indicated and worked it down all the way to the edge, cast it off and I tried it on and the body portion was huge to the point where when it was on me it looked like it looked like it had structure. So rather than it just sitting like down like dropping the fabric sat out so it sat out in like a little balloon around me it was really weird but basically I think that the problem with it is that the original garment had been knitted in something that was a bit more drapey and a little bit more um, maybe a silkier kind of wool or maybe it had was a blend of something that was silky so it had some drape and some flow to it and the fabric I chose was a it's a wool alpaca blend but it's very it's still very structural it hasn't got the drape that alpaca tends to have so it's a wool alpaca and i picked it because i thought the wool would be great obviously for the color work and it is it has worked out really nicely and i'm really happy with it but the body shape itself after the oak was really unflattering. So I ended up, um, oh, I have a plaster on because the cat uh, got me this morning and proper snagged my finger. So it's a little bit tender and sore and I've, cause I've been washing my hands, the skin's kind of gone a little bit separated and a bit sore looking. So I've just put a plaster on for now um, so that I don't get anything in it. Um, tangent <laughs> um but yeah so I worked on this sweater for quite a while and then had to rip back all the way to the I just realized one of my ends is stuck out how the hell done that anyway one of my ends is stuck out on the side I'll have to pop that back in the other side um so this bottom portion, I had to pull all of this back to about here, just after these um, like corrugated rib sections of the colour work. Um, I think for the first size it's like 300 stitches there and there I separated for the sleeves and for the body. Um, excuse me. And the I changed the design distribution of the body so it has no increases after the yoke, which there was a lot of increases. I think it went from like 300 stitches to like 450 or 70 something. It was a nutty amount that it kind of increased to. And no wonder this sat like a structural thing, because with the weight of the, with the structure of the yarn and how it was um, not draping, it was just making it balloon out. It looked horrible. <laughs> So I knew that I had to take it back. So I took it back to where the body and the sleeves were and I worked out that um, where my arms were in the sleeve, I could basically do a like a drop that was less than, um, I could basically do, what am I saying? The part where the drop for the sleeves are on my yoke, I could do slightly 
um, less in the um, width of my upper arm. So I worked out that with still a reasonable amount in my upper arms, I could make the body if I cast on some underarm stitches which weren't there in the pattern, I could make the body about two inches um, positive ease to me. So that's what I did. So the the body after the yoke has um, is more about forty inches, and I'm more of I'm like a thirty eight inch bust, approximately ish, depending on whether I've been eating all the foods or not lately. We all know that. Anyway, and then I did my sleeves um, decreasing evenly down my sleeves and then I left a little bit of straight here and then I, um, I've done cuffs that are slightly longer than wrist just so that I can have the cuffs down to about here but I can also fold them back and have them as like little mini turn backs which I think are really cute I really like that so that's a feature I added in as well which isn't in the pattern but I really think it's adorable and it just gives me the option of being able to be a bit cozier with my hands if I really wanted like a little bit of a longer fit I can kind of pull them down a little bit it's a bit more snug but yeah I really love it it's a really nice design um but I did have to do a lot of finagling after the yoke. Uh, I spent about a couple of weeks doing the yoke. Or was it a couple of weeks? I'd started the yoke about up here and then I spent like, I think I've done that like within a week. It took me quite ages. And then I spent the rest of one weekend doing all of this around Christmas, um, watching The Witcher. <laughs> so I got that done quite well. And then it just ended up sat there. After I'd done the body, I think in January, it sat needing the sleeves for over a couple of months while I worked on things for work. So yeah, it just, just has taken me a long time to get through, but not because I haven't worked on it. It's just because I've had a lot of time in between where I've had to work on other things. So that is my witching hour. I did it in the drops um, Lima, which is DK and it's a wool, it's either 55 wool and 65 alpaca or it's the other way around and this is like the it's like a plummy colour I can't remember the number I uh, I'll bring in my knitting notebook so Will's mum bought me this for my birthday it's a personalised Vanessa's knitting notes and I've actually been keeping notes crazily I know. Um, decided to start keeping notes so that I could keep um keep like my alterations that I've done in here but actually written out properly whereas sometimes on Ravelry I rush them they don't always make sense to me afterwards start taking my time and I've started writing them out um I don't know if I did write the colours in one of the colours is uh cream zero one zero zero and the other one is the wine colour, but no, I haven't written it in. I've just written wine. I can find that out there. Give me a second. So the wine colour is 5820. That's this. It's really affordable. I know that people have qualms with um, with drops, which makes me a little bit apprehensive of buying it, but it does really knit up nice. Um, and I suppose those of us who can't always afford snazzy yarn, unfortunately, if we really want to make things for ourselves and enjoy the process of being able to create, sometimes we have to buy the, uh, the cheaper brands. So yeah, I ended up buying a sweater quantity in this colour quite a while ago. I think I bought 14 balls. I've got about two and a bit left. I think I've got more actually because I think I've got some hidden somewhere else. I didn't empty out, out the whole amount. 
So I think I probably used about seven in this. So I'm going to check. So I used about seven of this and I have about four of the cream left, which I bought about maybe another seven of. So I could potentially make something else. Ooh, maybe a snood would be nice for winter. Might be a plan or a cool little hat. I'm just going to get my other other drink. I bought this when I went to see the the, the rise of Skywalker. Yeah, I had to double check that. <laughs> it's got C three PO on the top. He's removable. It's just like a little dickery thing. But I've. I started today drinking out of this cup because it actually tells me how much I've uh, had to drink. I've not been drinking very well. So I don't, if people, people will know this, if you don't drink enough, you um, get like low, you can have like low blood pressure, kind of have dizzy spells. Yesterday I started having dizzy spells and realised that probably I should be drinking more. And Smith's two drinks. <laughs> so that is that. And I have been using my notes book. It's got one of those little envelopes in the back, which is really cool and handy. And um, the paper's really nice. Actually, kind of, it does have a little tiny bit of ghosting, but not like too bad. Um, so yeah, you can see a little bit. Um, but basically, like my placement of my sleeve decreases I've popped in there on graph paper so that I can I can replicate that again if I ever want to do that on this or something similar on another sleeve. Um, and I just like write all of my notes of how I made my alterations to my sleeves and my body, how I distributed the stitches and any other information like needle changes and such because on this I did actually do did actually do the uh, colour work did I do it on a different needle? I did the colour work on a 4.5 because usually I have to go to a I have to go a uh, needle size down for colour work so I'm a little bit looser and then I went to a 5 for the body and then back down to a 4.5 for the edges it doesn't tell you to do that for the edges but I noticed when I did the the original design when I did it the first time has this uh, corrugated rib on the bottom edge before the rib and because there was because you don't go down a needle size and because of the colour work it kept flicking up the uh, edge so it just kept sitting up like this so it just kept pointing it just wanted to bow so I decided that when I did my secondary version of the body I was not going to include the colour work in the bottom part, part of the of the body yes I can't call it anything else <laughs> and then I decided that I was going to drop a needle size for the rib didn't take out any stitches though I just dropped a needle size um, and same with the cuffs but it just meant that it it doesn't hug hug because you've not decreased any but it does a little enough that it won't do the of the popping up of the edge. So yeah, worked out really nice. And I have wore it twice, which is why I'm not wearing it today. Because otherwise, then I'd be misses wearing my jumper three times uh, in a row. And I needed to switch it up for my own mental health <laughs> because at the minute, I think change is like a good thing, like as much as possible, even though we're indoors. So, yes, so today I actually did my face, because I didn't do it yesterday, although you can't really tell, I think I've rubbed like half of my blusher off, <laughs> like, I've been like sneezing and stuff because of hay fever and like blowing my nose and things, and I think I've rubbed half of my blusher off with my tissue, um, but yeah, it has been on since this morning though, so I probably should have reapplied before I did this. Anyway, babbling, 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 babbling. Um, my next thing that I 
I've been working on or like a crazy lady so I picked this back up at Christmas because it was just an enjoyable travel like a little travel project but also it's quite comforting and I've been doing my northeasterly blanket I don't know if anybody has seen this in a long time so I started this last year and I only did about this one trip from here to this peach to this brown and nothing else that was it and it just sat there and then I realized at Christmas when I got it out and I was like oh I have not touched this especially since I had taken pictures and put them on Ravelry that was the last time I updated it was 2018 December pathetic right so I decided that I was gonna start extending it so I did another strip I attached on this one and I've put in so many rows and I'm just using scraps out of my um, little pile of uh, mini swaps that people have sent me and gifted me and then from here is it here or here I started using some of the leftovers from my uh, scrappy socks that I got at Christmas I did like an advent swap and I've just started I started adding those in there's like just a little bit of something fun um to remember that strip from this year and then I decided to add in decided to add in a bear and Vola mini that my friend Susie gave me from the previous Christmas 2018 and I decided to add it in and then I did do um, some, I did buy a, like a little mini skein set when Lara of Fawn um, and the Fox or Fawn Knits um, did like a Christmas little mini skein set with Christmassy colours and they were super pretty. It doesn't give it justice really because this has a really nice pop to it. Um, but I decided to add them in as a... Um, Yeah, started the new colour as well. But I started to add those in, the extras, because I'd done a pair of shorty pixel rise socks and I had a fair amount left of some of the colours, um, but not of some of the other ones. But I just decided that it'd be really nice actually to have them in my blanket as a memory of that Christmas. So yeah, so I'm getting quite far on those two rows and this now goes from waist down to feet but I need to get it a little I need to get this strip a little bit longer because I want it to go over the feet a little bit so yeah I still need to extend that quite a little while but I thought I'd do the second strip up to a similar point and then at least um it doesn't feel like it's this one strip is just like dangling around so much but it is coming on really nice I'm really happy with it I'm really happy that I'm doing like uneven um, rows of colours, you know, different depths of colour because it makes it more interesting and scrappy looking and it looks really cute. And I like all the colours that have like the pops, like these ones. And this green, so pretty next to the brown. Yeah, it's just really like looking at it, it's really satisfying. And like this lemon next to the peach. Yeah, so I've been really enjoying this project and it kind of seems to be the one that I keep picking up. I don't know if that's just because it's easy going. <laughs> Probably is. So I've been working on that. So that's that. And then I have, we'll go on to some acquisitions. I haven't got too much, but this is the project bag that I keep my blanket in currently. And it's covered in fluff. But usually um, the beginning of, well, the start of April kind of spells like yarn show time. But this year there was the uh, Yorkshire Yarn Fest, which was happening in March. And unfortunately, due to what we are all currently dealing with is basically a quarantine a lockdown situation due to the pandemic. We all know about it, or we should. Uh, 
So we were all trying to be careful and staying inside, uh, which I'm very happy to do. Um, and uh, so Yorkshire Yarn Fest couldn't go ahead. Um, and to be honest, I was I was going to go with Tracy of Thimble and Threadmaker. We both dis we both um, kept in touch with each other, and because both of our partners are high risk, we decided that it would be best definitely not to bother. So, but then they started doing a virtual online um, show. I think to keep everybody's spirits up. I think they're going to do it every month while we're under quarantine, just to keep people um, keep makers making. Um, and small businesses making and selling, but also because we um, we look forward to the small things, don't we now? <laughs> so that's really nice. Um, I did find it fairly overwhelming, to be honest. Like I think a lot of people really enjoyed it and really delved in there. I think because I wanted to go to the show to pick my yarn and the colours and usually that's what I do. Like I don't really... Unless I've got a project like this where it's two blatant contrast colours and I know definitely what I'm looking for, I kind of like to go in person because I like to be able to, it's not about touching and always touching and feely, it's about the colours and how they look in person next to each other and that's what sometimes gets me. Um, anyway, so in the end I don't really buy any yarn. Is it a bad thing? I mean, really, in the current uh, climate of things like having um, money saved aside is not the worst thing. So, um, and I don't have a ton of money, so I kind of have saved a little. And I, I have actually bought, because I was going to the um, Spring and Tool show, I had actually already pre-ordered a the 52, um, 52 socks book. Uh, so, lovely uh, Michelle of uh, the loveliest yarn company um, kindly saved me one aside, but now that that show is not happening either, she's um, going to ship me it. So, I've sorted that out already. So, I've got that to look forward to. Um, and so, I just decided in the end I would treat myself to a couple of things that I didn't need to see in person. So, I got myself a little pin. I got a by stitch wool pin. I don't know if you can see it very well. There we go. Uh, it was just really cute. I love the oil slip like colours. Uh, it made me chuckle. And then I bought, and these were from Lana Bow. I bought some of the um, dinosaur laser cut little stitch markers. <laughs> I love these. I might even find some more permanent clasps for them eventually. Because I, I do like the light bulb ones, but I think that um, sometimes I end up with them um, um, not stuck on my knitting, but I find it hard to get them. If I've put them on a certain way, if I've not taken them off in the right direction, I have to take the, stick, the marker off first and then the light bulb. But anyway, I really love these. The dinosaurs won me over, especially this sparkly T-Rex. Look, one of my favourite films is Jurassic Park. Dinosaurs are my thing. So yeah, uh, so you can check out. I'll put all. Of, I'll put her information below. But the uh, Lana Bow on Etsy. She does some really nice things like stationery bags, uh, pins like different all sorts of different kinds of pins, stickers. Uh, did she do notebooks? She did pens. So there's quite a lot to go on, all saying different things. Um, she also added a little sticker in there. I love knitting, which is true. And I got a little um, postcard with the shop details on that says knit happens. So I've, I've popped that on my wall because that's quite fun. Uh, so yeah, so I did treat myself to a couple little bits, but not exactly what I'd intended. But those will be things that will always get seen and used, so I'm happy with those. And then I also recently purchased a mini skein set um, from Pixie Arms. 
Probably, yeah, that's better. I bought a mini skin set from Pixie Yarns. Uh, this was for um, the Operation Social Justice um, hashtag on Instagram and the seller picked a percentage donation towards a charity of their uh, choosing. So this went to a charity um, supporting people, victims of hate crime. And I just thought that was a really nice set and really nice um, being able to put a donation towards something important. So I picked one of these up because I was in the ability to be able to afford a treat. So, and these are going to go, these are going in the blanket. So I've actually bought these specifically for my blanket, which I don't really usually do. I usually just pick out scraps um, or yarns that I've already knit with and add them in. So yeah, they're going to be really fun. So those are Pixie Yarns. And she does some really beautiful colours. Really happy with those. Um, I'm going to take another sip of my tea because I'm sounding a bit husky. I also did my nails yesterday so yeah kind of stamped my finger as well I put on some like latex stuff around your nails so that you um, don't get the when you cure your nails you don't get the um, nail varnish cured to your skin which is really great stuff but then when I peeled it off for some reason I must have had like a little not a skin tag but kind of um, it kind of ripped and I was like ah so that was quite sore, but they look really beautiful and peppy and sparkly. Uh, the other mistake that I did, because I was so excited to like do them and just have something different to do, and um, I probably weren't in the best frame of mind either because I've had quite a, well, I had a stressful week, let's just say. <laughs> um, but yeah, I forgot to put the base coat on. Bearing in mind this is the second time that I've used the lamp since I got my nail varnish in February. I forgot to put my base coat on. So either these were gonna these are gonna stick on forever and I'll have to grow them off. Or they are going to peel really easily and they won't last two minutes. Or which I don't think is going to happen. A lot of people said that, sorry about that, I kind of like need to wrap this up I think because my phone is telling me I've not got much space. But yeah, the nails might uh, stain but I think these are, um, I think these, uh, when I look on the site, they're, um, they're Laguna Moon nail gels and they um, have a lot of natural beauty products and bath bombs and natural essential oils and I think these are made with that kind of thing in mind. Not obviously 100% because they have to have some form of chemicals in them but still um, actually when you use them I notice that they don't have much of a smell to them um, which is amazing because obviously I have my cat and toxic things like smells and things are not good. Um, for anybody so I would highly recommend the Laguna Moon nails and they stay on quite nicely I would say though that the last time I did them I didn't if you don't buffer your nails properly you might end up finding that they may peel especially if you don't go over the tips um, I think last time I decided that I was if I was going to wash up and things and have my hands submerged in water for a while that I would probably wear gloves instead uh, to stop them from possibly peeling off uh, just so that you get the two week like life shelf life kind of out of them but they look so pretty <laughs> I'm glad I went for the glittery ones this time I went for the plain purple bright purple ones last time um, so yeah the next thing that I picked up was I was part of the February yarn club for the um, I caught Thorns and Roses that Down Sheep Elaine Debbie is doing and this is the gorgeous colour and it's so pretty and it, this is still from the first book 
um, and it's called Fire Night. So the, it's the night where uh, I think if I remember correctly, it's where Feyre and Rassand uh, meet for the first time. And when I saw, when I am um, in the book when that actually happens, I can remember thinking that oh, I hope she gets with him. And I don't know, there was just something about him that I quite liked, so he was this dark, mysterious stranger. But yeah, big, big Rassan fan. I need to read them again, they were so good. I'm currently reading the new book, which is The um, Present City, and it is good. It's very different from A Court of Thorns and Roses. I'm excited to see how it develops. Um, I've now got into the story a bit more. Um, originally I'd only read like maybe 120-ish pages and I was struggling to remember certain words about the um, world that she'd built and I had to keep going back and being like what does that word mean again? It was a bit frustrating but I don't know if my head was in the right like brain space because I was doing a lot for work um, at work and out of work so I felt like it was probably a little bit too intense um, which is why I started the second book. <laughs> So I'm currently reading two books. But yeah, I actually got this on the... I had the Merino and Nylon base for the last uh, one and I didn't get Marches. Didn't actually pick up Marches um, Club at all because I didn't have quite as much money um, in March. Um, so I couldn't commit. Which is very sad because I really wanted to try and get them all, but um, that's broken that. <laughs> um, but after after feeling the uh, Superwash Nylon one, which is just a basic kind of sock yarn, I decided to have um, a go on Debbie's 80% uh, Blue Face Leicester and 20% Bamboo. Um, so the Bamboo is replacement of the Nylon because it's really strong. It's really good for um, your socks and BFL is just more woolly and also strong, I believe. Um, but I wanted to try it because it looks plumper. This excites me because when I actually feel it, it is plumper and it's so spongy. And now I kind of want all of my sock yarn to be in this. It just feels so much nicer. So I'm really excited to knit with this. In fact, one of my 52 socks um might be in this mm, yeah that'd be nice wouldn't it so yeah it's really beautiful really like spongy and plump and beautiful you can see there it's just really nice yarn so that was a uh, 80 20 400 meters 200 gram uh, and just a four ply fingering weight really nice and then i also picked up I think for my birthday uh, my nan gifted me some pennies um, I think I bought something else as well but I ended up picking up some of the Laughing Yaffle which I haven't bought any of their yarns since I first started knitting which was a long time ago um, but she now does self striping which she didn't do when I first um, bought sock yarn from her um, and I got really excited because I checked out a store and she just updated it with some self stripings. This is the octopus colorway. It's like all the colors that I love so much. I died when I got in this in the post. So I love self striping socks, especially in fun colors. And this just, it like wowed me. So I can't wait to knit all these stripes. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Um. So yeah. Really excited. Uh, and this is just a super wash merino and nylon. 400 meters. Still be socks for sure. And that is it peeps. That is all I've got to share with you for today. Thank you for spending some time with me though. It's been really nice to chat, even though it's two ways green. <laughs> um, I keep spending most of my day like drinking tea and coffee and walking up to my window where my plants are and pretending that I'm in some kind of like outside garden because my plants are all like grouped together. I kind of feel like I'm 
in a garden, but I'm not. And I need to find a new project to cast on. So now that I've finished that sweater, I haven't really got anything big on the go. So that's my mission. Um, I have the day off tomorrow off work. I'm now working from home. Um, now working from home, video calling my, with my parents once a week, depending on what's happening. Um, and yeah, so I've been working from my craft room slash office. <laughs> which has actually been kind of nice like I haven't been minding that at all it's um I think it'd be really good and I probably would um not be as stressed sometimes if I could do it um but with the current climate obviously it's still stressful even working at home so um I don't think that that's gonna disappear anytime soon um I have got um, a week off over Easter, so hopefully that'll help me um, cow my horses. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll see. So other than that, today and tomorrow I'm going to continue crafting and reading. I plan to read. And I know that Will's doing me a roast lamb tea for my evening dinner. Yum. I think I'm getting roasties, some vegetables, and some like lamb chops. I think that'll be really nice. Sorry, lambs. <laughs> I, I'm a meat eater, so I'm sorry, people. Um, I uh, I'm already I'm dairy free and gluten free anyway, so you can't take everything away from me. Um, I will share with you this little before I go this little tiny thimble that my brother got me for my birthday in February. Isn't she cute? It's a little quilting cat. It's a ceramic one. She's got a little apron. <laughs> Isn't she adorable? So apparently they've gone to a craft fair, him and my mum, and they found, well, not like a craft fair, like a little maker's market kind of thing that they found. Um, maybe around December, January. Um, and she had loads of different animals with different professions. So some of them were nurses, um, office workers, like different, you know, themes. And they found the quilt making crafter. Little cat. It's cute. I just thought I'd share that because it's adorable and I've not shown anybody it yet. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to love you and leave you. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. I hope that it's been enjoyable for you as it has been for me making it and I hope to see you again sooner rather than later because I know it's been a while hopefully next time I'll have some new projects to share with you and we can get back to a bit more of a regular uh, regular schedule thank you so much bye stay safe and wash your hands <laughs> <laughs>